My mom kind of demands a, an allowance. I actually give twenty five percent of my take wow. home. Do Do you feel like when you do your salary double and triple, you keep the number the same or you keep the percentage the same? No, so it goes by percentage. And oh. it's not. Are you a naughty boy if you don't give money to your parents? Or girl? This is your <laughs> daily catch up. Very inclusive show. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the content so far, do remember to drop us a sub and hit that notification button. This episode was brought to you by Scythe. So just the other day, um, I was I stumbled upon this article on Seedly, uh, and it's written by someone that we actually know, Ming Feng. So shout, shout out, out to you. Go article, man. Yeah. Um, and it's it was quite heartbreaking. So basically, he the the title of the the article was why I regret not giving my parents an allowance. Okay. Regret. Yeah. Wait, did something happen to the parents? So wow, damn spoiler. Why are you? Yeah. Why is <laughs> it a spoiler? Yes. Yeah. So okay, okay. I mean, it's not a laughing matter. It's quite it's quite heartbreaking. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. um, he's obviously a financial writer and he's someone who's very financially savvy. So instead of giving his parents or his mom in particular, uh, an allowance, he decided to invest in like an ETF for her oh, So that it was slowly oh. built into something in the future. And then she was he was building a retirement fund for her. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Short. The the problem was that you know obviously he was thinking as himself right. This is something that he would do because he still has all these years left to live. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, his mom passed away, like mm. two years into, into, it, into it. Yeah. Right. Right. Um. Sorry. Two years ago. So basically, she never got to see or use the money, lah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so he never got to to give back to her in that sense, like, or contribute to her every day. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. And so I think it goes back to the question, like, I, th- I think people our age, there's always, I, I, like, I, I normally talk to my friends about this, right? Like, do you give to your parents? Because it's such a strange one, right? Like, you read online that our generation is the first generation where we're going to earn less than our parents. And I know I definitely earn oh, less Oh, I than didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. It's the first generation that's poorer than the previous generation. And so it's... it's the history of mankind, eh? How sad is that? Wait, does that include my generation? <laughs> oh yeah, you probably you yeah. haven't studied oh, your yeah, okay, okay. Right? <laughs> but don't be sad guys mm-hmm. when I read this it was actually I am doing the same thing now oh right wait so every month you don't give them money is it I don't oh yeah I feel busted now I think about it I mean I, I read this like months ago like, it's not a new article it's on Sidley by the way I feel like okay I it, it's a good wake up call and reminder that he he reflected on this after his mother's passing and all that stuff but I feel like what is the alternative to give to them lah. Because my, my as in the alternative for him is if he if his parents don't have a retirement fund. Yeah. Right. He would either give them now and then cannot support them later in life. Yeah. And it's an ambiguous goal, mm. right? It's really as much as possible. Then after you try and divide. Yep. And you don't know when you will die. And the the fear of retirement is that you don't die. Do the you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you yeah. scared you, you, really you live long enough. Yeah, you really outlive all yeah. your, your savings and investments, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so I'm kind of doing the same with my parents because um, they were fantastic parents, but they didn't save money. Right. But they didn't save money also a little bit out for one. Like, I feel like they are just very selfless. Um, so they, they give. So that's why we don't have to ask growing up. Like, but did they ever like kind of pressure you to give or like, or like was that? Do you ever feel like you had to give to them? Mm. Uh, not not recently, but yes. Right. Like I don't know whether I recounted this on the show before, but I once asked my dad, like, what's your retirement plan? Because they, they used to have insurance. They gave up the insurance during the uh, I think the 08 crisis. Ooh, yeah, they okay. gave up their insurance. They also sold. I mean, now they own a house, but prior to that, they didn't have a house, so they sold and then we were renting because we were already renting to begin with right um because they there was a period whereby we all need to leave from home remember the mannequin episode where where basically it's a home office like and we know take care of my grandparents mm. so because of that we were already renting and we're making a profit of renting because they were already profiting so they when they needed the money my sisters going to university and they also had credit card debt and all that stuff right they sold their they sold their house and never got down to buy another one right mm. so there was a good like maybe f- 10 5 10 years where we actually were without property yeah. And so one day in a car, right, I casually asked my dad, it was just him and I. I say, hey, what's your retirement plan? Ah? Then he point to you. <laughs> uh, then he just say you lah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, presumably me and my sisters lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which now Aww. explains why you were hoping for your children to be revenue yielding. Because this is the kind of principles <laughs> that have been endowed on no, you. No, it's not that it's, it's, him. It, it more of reinforces that you should only have children if you can uh, really afford. Yeah. Yeah, you won't have to rely on children. 
Yeah. So if we talk about do we want to have a kid now, I need them to be re- revenue yielding now. Now. Yeah. yeah. You know, in that sense, lah. But I mean, obviously, it's a joke, lah. I mean, comment section got triggered. Yeah, I but I feel like I, I feel like there's a very very strong yeah, argument yeah. there, right? Which is that children don't ask to be born, and because yeah. of that, right? Yeah. The moment a parent makes that decision, right? Why why do we owe it to them that they were well, putting all the hard work and all that to raise a child? Agreed. But it was it was never on us. It's their decision, so they they shouldn't look at us. No, so like I was having this internal debate with myself. I don't know why, but like. So you when you were like seven, when I, when I I recently saw a story from someone I think we all know. I mean, we both know who's like pregnancy is really really bad. So like she has to she she gets a lot of rash. Ah, yeah, I don't want to be ah, I know, I know, I know. Okay. okay. I mean, it's nothing bad about her, right? So mm. like she gets a lot of rashes. She gets really really bad morning sickness, and like the pregnancy <laughs> is just is taking a toll on her, right? And so like I would imagine if. I was the mother. In 10 years' time, if my kid is a brat, right, I'll be like, you know how hard was it to give birth to you? But then if I was a kid, I'll be like, oh, I didn't ask to be here, what? Yeah. Like, you guys were the one that wanted me, what? Yeah. And so then, like, where does that, that accountability fall? Or is it just one of those things in life where you just don't have an answer to, like, whose fault was yeah, it? I, but yeah, but I don't think it's clearly about the kids don't have responsibility. Because if I open the door for you, is it within my right to expect you to say thank you? But you can stand there and argue with me and say that yeah, I don't ask, ask you to open the door <laughs> yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's, it's not too much for me to expect a thank you or a not lah in acknowledgement, right? Yep. And I feel like why we can deal with this and then we can't deal with the other one. I think at some point I didn't ask to be born is because whatever you expect of me, I cannot give you. So sorry, I didn't ask to be born. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not a perfect flawless excuse because I feel like there's a huge double standard there. Yeah. Yeah. Like w- when I want a child, everybody's child is like that. Why I don't know why my child is so fucking rude to me. So so looking at it as a family unit, right? And then as a team, and then needing to work together and support each other. La. Like maybe that perspective will, will I mean that will help put put things in perspective for the child also when it comes to situations like because finance is something that you're going to support each other either way, right? Mm. Yeah, so coming back to that, are you guys filial in that sense, financially filial? My mum kind of demands uh, an allowance. Demands? Like it's something that we fight about. Yeah, so I actually give 25% of my take home. Wow. Yeah. So quite quite Do do you feel like when your salary double and triple, you keep the number the same or you keep the percentage the same? No, so it goes by percentage. Oh, it's not so she, I think so she said it's five percent. Now that you're earning, I want twenty five percent of your pay. Yeah. She clever, so, yeah, she clever. She if you move out, do that. Does the clause end? Is that a termination clause or is her lifespan? Yeah, I think it's her lifespan. Wow. She's smart. Okay, okay thanks, thanks, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> You did mention she that your mom is the yeah. financially savvy one in the family. Yeah, she is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so the money it. goes to my mom, not my dad. Right. Oh. Yeah, so my so you <laughs> both? By right, no, no, no. supposed to, la, but, but your dad don't ask. La. Yeah, my dad never asks. Right. And so basically, I have a joint account with my mom, so the money just goes into that so, account. Yeah, so that means if your dad asks, you have to give 25 25? No, la, I think it was split. La. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. But what, I didn't what do you feel about negotiating with your parents? I tried before, yeah. Like I mm. went to Google, like what is the average amount that people give, right? Turns out it's ten percent, yeah. Then I'm like, yeah. oh my god, I'm losing out fifteen percent, eh. So then I go and tell my mom. Then after that, my mom lists out, say when you go kindergarten, I send you to this school. Then I send you to this tuition. Then mm. other people do they get the same thing? So then now yes, she uh. have to yield the same, uh. Well, about twenty five percent, quite a lot. So there is a survey done, and they found out out of six thousand six hundred people, right, in Singapore, what is the median um amount that you give to your parents, uh, depending on age group. So, in general, it's ten percent. But when you're eighteen to twenty, it's 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 ten percent. Can we say a numerical number? <laughs> sure. Like say the value. Sure. <laughs> is it the reaction you want? It's on numerical value, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So, so in because general, everybody's ten percent different, right? Yeah. Every, so in general, everyone gives ten percent. But obviously, if you earn more, and you, you, when you're older, you earn more. Right? So between the age groups of like eighteen to twenty, the median amount given is like hundred and sixty. Uh, when you're twenty-one to twenty-five, it's four hundred. Cause you know you start your first job. Good for them. Is that a lot though? Four hundred. It's ten percent. Ten percent. So you're earning four. Wow. No way. Who <laughs> under twenty-five lot, is yeah. earning under four k? Yeah. Have lah. Like, not our industry. <laughs> <laughs> 25, I still studying, yeah. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why. No, like, but, but, but girls start early, la. You don't have to go NS. Yeah. I was thinking of giving my parents 300. <laughs> that's quite close, right? Okay, no, but what's that? Not 21, la, dude. <laughs> now. You're begging your parents now. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, my situation is the complete opposite. Good for you, my sir. My parents, like, my parents are like, I think you need the money more than 
more than us. So, because you need to live your life, ma. Yeah. You do what you That's need to my do. biggest pain point, uh, honestly. Because like to me, it's like I'm giving you this, but now is the time where I can be investing, I can be compounding my money. Mm. But then in in fact, I'm giving all this money like back home. Then that feels like the fact that you still can give like have the money to give your your mom twenty five percent and still invest and still live your life. Like oh, you look like I a don't tell her I freelance pay. Ah, so, so you don't pay 25% of that. Smart. So if you want, we can adjust your base sleep. Hey, wait, wait, I cannot wait, say that. Uh, hey, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> it's like, why you got to pick up on any COVID? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to avoid parent tax. Yeah. Then you just tell you haven't find a job. <laughs> but every day I go out 9 to 5. <laughs> to find find job. job. Every morning you read yeah. newspaper, you say, I'm trying to find a job. <laughs> then I have to cross out on the yeah. newspaper. <laughs> your parents never. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> but you tried to give them, your parents say no or what? Try to give parents say no. How many times you try it once? Uh? Uh, <laughs> never, no, no, like you ask them, do you absolutely need me to give you money? <laughs> no, I felt like the conversation happened very early when I just oh. And then never again. La. Then once once that was established, then I was like, oh, okay, lo. if that's the mindset, then I'm just gonna do whatever I do. But so yeah. then maybe they're discussing like, hey, how come when should we bring it up to John? Ja? Like it's about no, time. So that's the funny thing. <clears throat> I think the issue is that then it comes out in different ways. For example, you don't own anything in the house. That kind of thing. Like right. I, I use my money to buy everything. Everything that you're sitting on, touching on, using, right, is my yeah. money. Eh. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit of an ugly way to look at it. But then it's like, oh, okay, lor, sorry, lor. it means you're the boss. You know what yeah. I mean? So I, I find ways to to give back or, or treat them, like bring them means, out, uh. Uh, do this kind of stuff. Okay. But other than that, I feel like there are many other ways that you can show your filialness to a child. I mean, to filialness to a parent. <laughs> yeah. So like, what are some of those other ways? Like how money. you mentioned going and bringing them out for meals and stuff, is it? Yeah, but that's like spending money on them, right? But oh, besides true. that, eh, you know what I mean? Because like no, in Asian culture, everything that, is money. I feel like it missed the point already. Because it missed the point of a child. Ev- to me, <laughs> ah, everything besides that is what you should be doing anyway. Yeah, as a good how, kid. La. Uh, as, as a good kid. La. Then, then it's how do you alleviate their financial burdens. If they don't need it, how can you make it even better for example you pay for your season parking if you don't you know like you pay for things or you pay for electricity because you perhaps you want the right to turn on your aircon 24 7 or whenever you're home right bad for the environment <laughs> but perhaps you want to do that right then you will take on the entire electrical bill lah, which is what 100 plus or still will be less than 10 percent off yeah I, I feel i feel like that's a very it's a more practical way to do things like you offer to pay for some utilities is that what you do <sighs> I, okay, to be fair, I haven't lived with my parents in a long time. I haven't, I haven't, I, the last time I lived with them was when I was 14. Hey, nothing to do with a bank transfer, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Someone of cryptocurrency, yo. <laughs> How many but, Bitcoin you give them? <laughs> but, but what I mean is that if I was living with them, it's easier to say, hey, I cover like this, this, uh. this. But I do have a lot of guilt uh, because like my entire education was private education. And I know like how much my parents spent on me. Like, it's true. When I was in Malaysia, I think. Every year, my 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 fees was thirty thousand ringgit, so it's ten thousand sing dollars, right? You times, I was there for eight years. That's eighty. Okay, whatever. Then we move on to Singapore. When I came to Singapore, I was in international school. My fees was thirty thousand sing dollars a year. Oh my god! And oh so my parents spent that for my entire secondary education. I went to uni in Australia. They gave me they gave me um, allowance. They paid for my rent. But was this money thing like how much your education cost, right? Was it something that you never thought about until like a later stage in life? I, I, yeah, because I always thought that this was just, oh, parents were supposed to give this law. And I think because I was surrounded, I mean, in international school, I was surrounded by people who were also given the same things, right? Like, right? They were, their, their overseas education was all paid for. Their edu- so that was your normal life? That was my normal until I, I met people in the real world like, and realized that, huh? You're paying back your parents for your education? Or you use your parents' CPF for your uni and now you're paying. But like I just I couldn't wrap my head around that whole like why I why do you owe your parents for your education, you know? Mm. Right. Until very, very until I started working and I realized like shit, what the f am I doing? La? And so I think it's like living in privilege. La. For yeah. sure. For sure. And so for the longest time, like I'm the kind that I always feel guilt, uh, guilty about it, but then I end up not doing anything about it. Like, so the longest time, I was like, okay, I need to contribute to my parents. But at the time, I was earning like maybe like 1.5 or 2. And I'm like, it's 150 bucks a month really going to help them. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I kick it down. Like, I say, once I'm earning like 10k a month, I'll do it. But obviously, that's like when I'm 40 or what, right? And like, you know, others thought, oh, hey, how to say, how to say. How to say, how to say. How to say. Well, my intern pays 700, I also have to give, yeah. 
Wow. Oh no. Bro. Okay. Twenty five percent of that. Your situation yeah. a bit extreme, lah, right? <laughs> I I feel <laughs> like I have some advice for you, but I I cannot turn around the clock for you uh. in a sense. But if you are at the stage of pre Denise, which is r- right before you enter the workforce, and hopefully if your parents are still working, and you still want to give them money, which is which you, you I mean you totally should lah to a certain extent. I would negotiate that. Can I give it to you perhaps when I'm 30 or 35, depending on when you start work? Or like start giving later, like when they're yeah, closer to retirement. Like let you work for 10 years first. Because compounding is free money. Yeah. Yeah. And like many people really underestimate the value of compounding. That one thing that everybody has that no one can take away from young people, no matter how bad this generation is, is your time in market. Yeah, but then don't you think that we, we, it goes back to time, right? And with the article, it's the fact that he regret because he was doing that, ma. Yeah. But within that 10 years, if you're giving this piece of advice, right? And within that 10 years, say, something, say, say, happen. something happens, right? That person, again, will basically never see it, right? Yeah. So then, I was just thinking about this just now as you were talking about it, right? Like, what if the solution would be that you you do half of both? Yeah. So you are investing half for the for, for your parents, and but the other half, half is still you're giving so that they can use it. So it's like a CPF. But for many young people, they are... Ten, half of their ten percent. It's insignificant is already. Is it? Yeah, yeah. La, but then the, the point is that you are still doing it. There's still that contribution on both ends. Right. Yeah. And the total amount that you are giving them is still the same, but with this strategy, it's going to be more because you get that half for the investment. Mm. Yeah. Basically, I think for those people who are maybe after this episode thinking of investing on your parents' behalf, right? Something that I encountered when I was starting out to invest was like there are so many stonks. Yeah. And then I don't know where do I begin, right? Yeah. Like that, how do I pick? Like what's a good company? What's everything? So mm-hmm. after our previous uh Scythe episode, right, I went to read up on like some of the stuff that they provide. La. Something quite interesting that I saw was this thing called Scythe Select. So mm-hmm. basically, usually Robo you put in and they just buy whatever stock that their algorithm wants to buy, right? But then yeah. for or determined by your risk. Yeah, correct. Yeah. You don't really have the choice, lah. Yeah, think. correct. But so for Scythe Select, they give you the chance to build your own portfolio. But it is out of a curated list of, I think, over a hundred like different stocks and ETFs or whatever right, that they pick right, out. Right. Okay, yeah, so right. it's kind of... Like yeah. filtered for you. Correct, yeah. yeah. Right. So how do they break it down? Like, are there specific categories from the hundred? I think there are. Like, for example, like if you are interested in like environment stocks or you think like maybe like EVs, are going mm. to be like a, a big part in future, right? I think yeah. there are like different themes. Yeah. Yeah, themes. <laughs> you, I mean, you brought out the themes thing. I think it's quite interesting because you can be ahead of the market in a sense. Like if you, yeah. you have very, very strong conviction in like now, now there are crypto funds oh, and all stuff, right? Or you got very, very strong conviction in the Chinese market rebound. Then you can really go into that specifically. But then there's more risk lah, in that sense because you are diversified into yeah. a singular theme. Oh. Because the nature of it is to spread the money around. Mm-hmm. That is kind of the thing. So you, you want to invest yourself there, you can look at 70, 80% gains over two years, for example. That's possible if you choose your own stock. But when you buy ETF, that's rarely possible. Right, like right, if you can go up by 20, 30%, it's a freaking degree. solid year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this is almost like an in-between solution between like, if you are going for fun, something safer, something broader versus Buying like individual stocks, la, have, yeah. right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Conviction you have towards a particular sector slash economy slash industry, la. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Y'all ever heard of this thing called the Di Zi Gui? No, nice not. It's a. I feel like it's a Confucian kind of thing. So it's basically Four a. Turtle. It's a no. It's, it's like got a few ch- chicken, obviously. Gui as in rules. So Di okay. Zi oh. is like children. <laughs> it's Disciple. Like, yeah, kind of disciple or like a, a uh, child lah. Then or floor turtle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what then. is zi then? Di zi, right? Di zi is floor, right? Di is floor. Okay, then I just go ahead. <laughs> wow, then, I thought my Chinese was bad. Then. <laughs> hey, shut up. Right? You know? <laughs> so it's basically a rule, a, a set of rules. There, there are many. I think there's like, I used to have a book oh, for it. Oh, it's an actual rule book lah. Yeah, it's a rule book like for what makes a filial child. Oh, and you're already so page, good. Huh? It's more than one page. It's like oh, a... Yeah, oh, you're already yeah. so filially like pious. Look, oh my god, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8. I don't know how many chapters. Oh, but the chapter's so small. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> no, it I expands. haven't expand. It exp- yeah, so then there are different ones. For example, this one starts with like, when my fa- when my parents call me, right, I must go immediately. That kind of thing. Oh, yeah, okay, I'll do that. Then, <laughs> when your parents ask you to do something, don't say I do later. 
Right. I mean, yeah, very, yeah, so then when they, That's me. When That's they very, scold you, you must listen. But there's a very twisted history behind this, you know? I mean, I don't know, I don't know how... Whether okay, it's, not so extreme. This okay. one is like the kind that like, if everybody is together, if I'm having dinner at home, yeah, yeah. then they say four plates for my family, four people. But if my parents, even if we all sat down, right, my parents have to start eating first. Then everyone else can start eating. You all still do this now? Uh, we don't eat together now. I always wanted to say. Wait, wait, oh, <laughs> the rule book doesn't say. <laughs> yeah. No, but wait, wait. Which yeah. one stuff, yeah? Wait, I always wanted to ask, right? When like, we were younger, yes. Whoever taught you to say, hey, auntie, uncle, eat, or like, this My one, parents, oh? No one taught me. And so when I started, like, hanging out with my friends' parents, and everyone started saying, yeah, I don't want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was like, like why am I telling this uncle what to do? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm so like, rude, yeah. Yeah. Why you say auntie eat? And you sound so loud somehow. Yeah. Like, my uncle was talking, like, why you want him to shut up and eat? <laughs> yeah. No, somehow, right, I'm in the same situation as you. Everybody that already does it normally, right, they just like, hey, uh, yeah, auntie eat, or yeah, like, yeah. mama eat, or whatever. Uh. Then they say it in, in their face, right? Then yeah. to me, it's like, oh, but it means something. So if I were to go and do it, which is really uncomfortable for me, I'll do it and have to show that I'm. Yeah. It's very meaningful and to me. And then somebody, yeah. somebody will laugh at you, then you will crack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, please eat first. Like, yeah. Also, the worst part for me was like the first time I dined with like Ned's parents, and they are the kinds that will all say it. So like, oh. the, not just her parents, like her her extended family, right? And so like all of them will one by one be like, you one know, by one. who who eat who eat. Then the the her cousins, no, her nephews and nieces also will then say to her sisters. So it's like. What the f is going on? I'm losing track, right? <laughs> then who do I say it to? So do I say it to the older siblings and the parents? No, so the heck is <laughs> Tatia Chi. Uh, uh. See, so I didn't know that, right? So by the time everyone finished singing, right, and then they start eating it, I'm like, I haven't said it yet, I haven't said it yet, I haven't said it yet. Then they're waiting. They're yeah. waiting for them. <laughs> so I will sometimes see that they eat already, right? And then maybe like the dad was still like, you know, wait first, wait first. Yeah. Like then go and say it or not. Then I'll be like, everyone eat. Yeah. I'll just be like, everyone eat. Then I'm like, mm, then just, that's like, actually quite rude. What the f what yeah. is this? You shouldn't even. That's them you either first to say that, or you don't say. Ah. If everybody already went down the table, right? <laughs> yeah. You go down the table, you shut up. So, so I realized how awkward it was the first time. After that, I just went like, e <laughs> <laughs> the uncle. Way. Wow, is no, it's bad? very strange also because like sometimes by the first, by the first person tell the fellow to eat. Yeah. The fellow eat maybe. That's like, right. Like, why am I narrating your life? You know what I mean? Then you drink soup, then you just, uh, Uncle drink soup. <laughs> Uncle drink water. Uncle scratch your nose. Yeah, why must I narrate imagine, your life? Imagine, imagine that you give. Honestly, it's a huge struggle for me. I think now, right, I just say until I'm good eat and then I just stop it there. Yeah, yeah. Just, just go with like the most senior people. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. I still do that. But there was like bare minimum. La. But you don't eat with them, right? Yeah, so I shout in from my room. Huh? <laughs> oh, sorry, what the fuck? Like, no, but I'm telling them that I'm, <laughs> that's about, you funny. I'm going to start eating. Right? Is that not the point? Eat! <laughs> just, no. What? No, I feel like the confusion lies because we are like the newer generation, we're all leaning towards a more. Western type of influence and culture, right? Mm. And individualism is a big part of that. Yeah. Mm. But individualism, in, in, individualism <laughs> goes di almost directly against Feminism. all these cultural yeah. values of and, and community. The concept right, yeah. of being filial, ma. Yeah. So actually, why I brought up this thing is like drawing back to like what we were talking about just now, right? Is this something that was inculcated in me since young? The confusion. Yeah, like, yeah. filial piety, whatever, like yeah. giving back to my parents and all that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so then I think that's why I also like give such a big percentage and like it's hard to argue against that also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think like, when, so when it comes to portioning my income, I think like you're right in that, in how you mentioned that like, I still take money to go and invest, but I always just wish that like, I have a larger percentage like, to compound while I'm still young. Both my parents were- Do you feel like you, they would rely on you for retirement? They would need to rely on you for retirement? My, they got no CPF, that's why, because my dad's self-employed. Right. Then after that, my mom is private. Are they insured? Yeah, very insured. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Insurance is very important. Yeah, we but I, say, I, plan plan. To, I plan to help them out with their retirement also, so I don't think that's an issue. No, I mean, contributing to the retirement and covering the retirement is completely different. No, but the money I'm giving to them, right, is not, it's not retirement fund money. Eh. Mm, it's yeah. like monthly expenses kind of money. Because somewhere it has to give. Ma. You have finite resources, you are the poorer generation. So like somewhere it has to give for you to be able to afford that retirement like later on in life. Right. Yeah. So I, I feel like it's, it's important that it's something that you kind of need to teach your parents also <clears throat> that what's practical and what's not practical. Because like bringing back to what no one can take away from you as a young working adult, is time in market. And right. if you are not exploiting this time in market, right, and then you realize that at 40 or even at my age 30, right, that you should have started when you're 20, right, 
Yeah. Or is ten years is double your entire savings kind. Yeah. yeah. If you have five thousand dollars, that's ten thousand. If you have ten thousand, twenty thousand, I have nothing. I had nothing. Yeah. So what I would just say from my own personal experience also is that I think the reason why I never felt pressured to give was one, my parents didn't ask. Um, but also because my dad is way more financially savvy than me. Mm. My parents have been retired for like 20 years already. And like <gasps> they, yeah, so they funded all my education while they were retired. Right. And my dad right. is just, every day, you know, he's investing. He's like watching Bloomberg. Like he's, he's earning money just purely from investing. And so to me, it's like, you've got this covered, you know. Right. And I don't know that they're having a, fi- a financially bad month because we never talk about money that often. Yeah. I think the other reason is because also my sister is a lot older than me. My sister is 13 years older than me. She's doing well also. And she lives with them. And so to me, it's like, if they don't have it covered, she's got them covered. Mm. Yeah. So then, like to me, I, I, in, my, in my mind, there's, like, there's no pressure. La. But yeah. right. anytime, whenever they need something, right? You just need to ask me and I'll give it. But maybe because we're not but having the asking those conversations, is hard. right? Yeah. It's gonna make it hard to, to yeah. ask. La. So yeah. Oh sorry. No, so after today I think I'm gonna, you know, talk. Yeah. I should say, right, well, I feel so guilty, right? Like as I was mentioning my parents, right? It's not that they are super well to do. Like they I, I misrepresented <laughs> them. I feel <laughs> like it's very gonna important. get cut out anyway <laughs> then. Everyone knows your parents really are gonna get robbed, dude. They're not. So, <laughs> so I should say that when my parents retired and then they funded like my, my uni and my education and everything, right? They really scaled back on their lifestyle. Oh, like, okay. like they they yeah. stopped going out. They, they sold the Lambo, lah. There's no Lambo. Oh, my, yeah, yeah, my, yeah. my dad only maybe drove <laughs> okay, a company yeah, car yeah, which yeah, the company yeah. paid for, and then they scaled back. Um, it was to the point where, again, why I'm guilty is that when I was studying in Singapore, right? He, my dad, who never cooked a day in his life, right, learned how to cook from my mom oh, so that no. he could come to Singapore and then spend a month to cook for me so that. This guy, like, get la, get la. good job, good job, very smooth. I really need to stop paying them, man. Uh. You should. Eh? <laughs> I feel like you don't have to give them something as well, yeah. yeah and, and and to like like not to like give any credit. Like my mom also did the same, like, So they yeah. would swap every month to like come and make sure wow. that I have good food. This. Wow, these are couple goals, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, is it they avoiding each other? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm kidding, kidding. Yeah, right. yeah, their conversation is so important because like, like. I mean, as much as I say that, like, maybe my parents don't, I mean, financially, maybe not that, like, prepared and, and for, for retirement and whatnot, right? But I want to say that, like, my whole life, right, they've taken care of me. Like, mm. they've given me whatever yeah. I've wanted for the most part. I've never had to think about or worry about money throughout my life. Only later on, then I realised that they were going through financial struggles, you know? Mm. Like, even when I was, I think when I was born that time, I was super young, right? Like, they were broke until they need to, like, crack open piggy bank, count the coins so that they can buy me like milk powder or some oh, shit, right? right? Yeah. yeah. And I but remember stealing from Sid. Sid, Sid, Sid piggy bank. bank. Sid piggy yeah. bank, yeah. But then... Flip it over and try and get someone dollars. But then, the, yeah, so, so like, one like one. it's right now, it's more of the... If this, like, if we can have more conversations with our parents earlier about finance yeah. and understand their situation fully, then just having the open communication and understanding each other's situations better, right, mm. will will help you to decide better how you should, where you should allocate your money, how you, how you can contribute back to your family and to yeah. your parents. Mm. So like, if, if for example, for your parents, right, no problem, right? Then... To me la, but I mean, I mean yeah, like, yeah, like, if, if, yeah, if, if the situation is that there is no problem for, for anybody's parents, then maybe, yeah, do the investment route. Invest for them uh, rather than give them. Yeah. yeah, but if they really need the money, then, then maybe it's right. better to just give them. No? Mine is flipped. Yeah, I will... I would like to figure out because I think for me, if even if my parents are struggling to make ends meet, mm. well, this is very bastard to say, but, but, but if they've been doing it successfully for years and managed to raise children, right? If they don't have a retirement plan, I feel like I need to then prioritize the retirement plan. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Because but, yeah. I think the conversation to be had with your parents is how are they funding their retirement? And if they, have, if they know that they can fund their retirement, then continue giving them the 10%, mm. 20%. You don't need to optimize the money for them. Your ho- the whole point now is just for you to pay back your debt. Yeah. yeah. But financing someone's retirement is not an amount that you can give and then you say we are done. Right. Financing yeah. someone's retirement is all the way to their lifespan. And you don't want to make the you don't want to one day wake up and wish your your parents weren't so expensive to maintain or like you wish your parents would die, for example. Mm. Yeah. Because why if they need hospital care? Mm. And they are plugged in, and they are they are staying there for years. Yeah, yeah. So, 
that's to me that's the conversation to be had how are they financing their retirement do they have a plan for it i, I think the other thing also is that i think a lot of people feel pressure because you read on the news like, like i think Sidley did a survey also it's like how much are everyone giving and like you said like, the average is 10 percent but sometimes that needs also is different for every situation yeah and you only will know when you talk to your parents and find out actually how much would actually make their lives a lot easier if they want the allowance instead of the investment like for me it's, i feel like my parents is one hospitalization away from wiping me out. Eh. One hospitalization. Ah. Okay. You heard yeah. horse also, right? Yeah, I heard yeah. horse. <laughs> one horse. And I was away wondering what is hospitalization. <laughs> <laughs> this is not my fault already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is hospitalization? Oh, shit. Yeah, like because if you if it exceeds the medi safe thing, uh. then one shot is 10, 20, 30 k. Right? I don't hold that much free cash. Mm. Yeah, right. I don't hold six months because I run my own company. So like to me, I feel like my job security is quite. Quite stable lah. Yeah, I have a question for you. So for investment, right? Are you investing everything in your with your own strategies and then you just carve out that percentage for your parents? Or do you have a you set aside the money for your parents, right? And it's a different investment strategy. Oh, no, it's for the like, same is it a different portfolio? It's oh, the, it's same, the same, same. Because to me, I feel like you 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 should be compounding with max value lah. Right, right. Sense, yeah. oh. So it's just whatever your strategy is, is to you the max max value they can give. So then how so, do you yeah. keep in mind okay. how much of this is actually None. your parents. How I keep in mind is that this is my money. Whatever they will need from here on out, I will give. Yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. So, but okay. they are living expense, they are fine. But I, I make mental notes, which I think it irks my mom to a certain extent because they are naturally very giving people. That when I go for dinner, right, and she cook, right, I just give her 50 bucks for the groceries. Or if she tap out for me, I just give her like 20 bucks for buying wow. my food. That I think that irks her, honestly. That kind of irritates oh. her why we're being so calculative on this shit. Right. But for me, is that. I never give you money, I'm not gonna drain your resource. Yeah. 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 But where I then try and pay back is like for example when they bought this house, I pay for a uh, bulk of the renovation or a lot of the the furniture and all that stuff. At the end of the day, do your own research and also um just be aware like high returns means a possible for high risk. Mm. <laughs> Where's the small at the ends, yeah? Possibility of your standing orders. It's so important. Okay, okay. Yeah. Important. And also if you know you want to invest like, with your parents, uh Cypher Select might be something that you guys can talk about. In terms of like building that portfolio, what would they want to invest in, that kind of thing? Yeah. That would be something to start a conversation. I, I think hope you can talk to your mom one day about this. Thanks. You are wasting your youth in that sense. That's I mean, what I keep trying to tell I don't her. want to tell you that I don't want to tell you how to be less filial to your mom. <laughs> but we live in a generation where it's not the same. Right. And we live in a country that for better or for worse, you must take care of yourself. Yeah. Different people have like expertise or they have more knowledge in different areas or interests. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can find something that's aligned with like your parents' interests, for example, and then use that as a way to broach the subject. Okay, China. Uh, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe. <laughs> so, mom, we both like China, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, this episode was brought to you by Saif. As you can tell from today's discussion, we all have different approaches to managing our money and our parents as well. Uh, so there's a great thing about Saif Select. It allows for customizability and personalization for everyone at a low cost. Check them out in the link below.